Hello guys, and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my plein air watercolor kit. Um, this is a small kit for watercolor that I bring just about everywhere with me and is meant to be as small and portable as possible. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to need is a container to put my items in. And I actually just used this old bank bag that my mother gave me that she was going to throw away. And it is actually very perfect. It has a nice little zipper top and is a fake leather plasticky type material um, so it won't leak if anything spills inside, which has happened by the way. And it's actually, for how simple it is, it works really well. And it's to make it a little easier to open since the little zipper is actually like really tiny and very annoying to use, I put a metal carabiner on it just to make it easier. The next things I'm going to need are my sketching tools. And the first one, which has become a new favorite, is the Uni Crew Toga Mechanical Pencil. And I have talked about this in a previous video, and I will link that above if you guys want to watch that. Um, so I will save you the ranting for that video. But I love this pencil, and it is in my kit forever. It has become a permanent part of this kit. Another permanent part of my kit is my Blackwing pencils, and I have the black pencil in this specific kit, but I actually use all three colors, the gray, the white, and the black. Um, they're just fantastic pencils, um, really easy to sketch with, and they're in my kit at all times. Another thing that I like to keep in my watercolor kit, which might sound a little bit weird, are my ink pens and these are just felt tip pens that I use to outline stuff or sketch with before I paint over them and for a small sketchbook and for my um, plein air kit uh, this one specifically I actually really enjoy having these in the kit so the first one which is an old favorite and will continue to be in any kit that I create forever is my Faber-Castell artist pit pen and um, it is fantastic. It is an archival black ink, and I have the tip in a size medium. But I actually have a full set of them that I use quite often that I like to switch them out, including like a brush tip pen. And I'll link the set that I have down below because I recommend it to anyone. It's just fantastic. Another um, felt tip pen that I bring with me is my Micron. So this is a Pigma Micron and in a size 03, so a nice, small, sharp tip. I actually love these for bullet journaling too, but they're great sketching pens. And of course, I'm going to need something to paint with. So this is the extra brush that I bring with me, and this is a size 10 synthetic round Utrecht brush, and I believe it's actually a brush for acrylic because it doesn't say watercolor on it. And I got this many years ago at a Blick store on, on the east side of Pennsylvania when I first started and it has been with me forever. So it's always nice to have synthetic brushes I think in my plein air kit because they do get beat up in the bag since there's like no pockets or anything to kind of contain them. And I don't want to you know waste space by using a uh, like a paintbrush container if that makes any sense. So it's always nice to have. Now, of course, I'm going to need something to paint with. So I have my all-time favorite portable palette, and that is the Portable Painter Palette, um, which will be linked down below as well, because I think everyone needs one of these if they do watercolor. So this little guy is awesome because it has a palette, the paints, and the water wells, and a brush all in one. So basically, you can get away with just this, a sketchbook, and water. <laughs> which is really cool uh, so it's this nice little portable size it's literally just a little bit bigger than my hand honestly and fits in this bank bag wonderfully it has little mixing areas on each side and it also comes with this awesome double-sided synthetic brush which actually is not a bad brush for coming with this palette it fits perfectly into the little brush slot on the palette so it all stays together and it's just such a nice little compact setup. It's also nice because each side of the cover acts as a water well. And I personally like to work with more than one water well no matter what where I'm watercoloring. Um, because I like to use one to clean my brushes, um, which will be dirty muddy water. And then one water well to put my clean painting water in. 
Um, so it's really nice to have the double-sidedness of it. It also stands up really well, so if you're on the ground, you know, it keeps it off the dirt. And it keeps it secure too, so you don't have a cup that can be super easily tipped over. But it's just an overall really nice palette, and I really enjoy using it. So the next thing is something to paint on. Obviously, I'm not going to be painting air. <laughs> so I have this wonderful little sketchbook that I've had for several years now and have not yet filled it, which is a crying shame. <laughs> but it'll happen. It'll happen soon. But um, it is a moleskin watercolor sketchbook with an elastic band, a black cover, and a nice little handy pocket on the back cover. And this sketchbook has been through thick and thin with me, even though I haven't really filled it, I've done a lot of sketching in it, and um, have it's been everywhere with me across the state, <laughs> traveling, and it even went out of state with me um, for a trip. It is a great size, it is very durable, I can attest to how durable it is because it has been through a lot. <laughs> the only complaint that I really have with this sketchbook is the paper, and it makes me sad because I don't think that this paper is 100% cotton, um, but I can find out. But I have it kind of has a little bit of a weird texture. It doesn't absorb the paint right away, which makes me think that it has um, some polymer in it. Um, and it has a little bit too much texture for me. Um, personally, it reminds me a lot of this Strathmore paper, um, which I really don't like the texture on. But Overall, it's a wonderful little sketchbook, and it does lie flat, especially when you get to like the middle area. And it has this nice elastic band, which I mentioned, but I really like the band because sometimes I will stick a pencil or even my brush in it um, just to keep my brushes or pencils from rolling, which is really nice. Another thing that I always bring with me are paper towels, a Ziploc bag, and a sponge. Now, the sponge is probably going to sound some weird, <laughs> really weird to some people, but I absolutely love sponges in my watercolor kits because they're amazing. So, if you have a nice little damp sponge, it is fabulous for rinsing off your brush and switching colors. Um, and this prevents you from using all your paper towels up, especially when you have a kit this small, you can't bring a whole roll of paper towels with you. So it's nice to have that compactness, but it's also nice because if you want to work on a wetter paper doing wet and wet techniques, um, you can use the sponge for that. If you need to clean your palette off, which I use a lot for this portable painter palette because it's so small, um, get a sponge, cut it up with a corner that can get in those little nooks and crannies, and you'll have your palette clean in no time. It's also nice because it's just really <laughs> nice for texturing, especially with doing painting trees and such. Um, you can paint directly with the sponge. Um, it's really fun, trust me. And I like to keep these all in my good handy old Ziploc bag, um, which some people will complain about because it's plastic, but it is an essential in my kit because when you have your wet paper towels and your wet sponge, usually you're not going to be outside long enough that it'll all dry off. So it's nice to put everything that's wet and dirty back into that little bag and be on your merry way. One thing that I also really like to use are these little binder clips and I love these because they're nice to keep the sketchbook open and also sometimes I like to stick pencils or like the tips of paint brushes like the end handles in the little clip holes um, while I'm painting so it's kind of like all there and it's kind of funny when you actually see it set up like that. But they're just great because having something to keep the paper down when you're sketching in a sketchbook like this that has, if you're painting on both sides especially, you need something to keep it off and sometimes bringing tape with you is a little bit hazardous. <laughs> so um, that's just how I like to do things. One other tool that I bring with me sometimes, but I do use a ton in the studio, is a little spray bottle. And the spray bottle is great plein air because it can be an easy way to clean your brushes, you know, spritz and you're done. Um, it can be a good way to clean off your palette if your palette's semi dry and you want to keep it wet, to wet your paints before you start to reactivate your watercolors. And also, if you, again, if you want to do some different texture techniques, um, wet and wet, a spray bottle can be a great way to do that. And these little four ounce spray bottles can be found just about anywhere. I got mine at like Walmart. Um, I will link down below a very similar one on Amazon for you guys. 
um, but it's just it's a really great tool to have if that's how you want to have your setup. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoy my content, you know, hit that notification bell and the subscribe button and get notified when a new video gets put up. And as always, thank you so much for watching.